to question four now we have this question here on the method of differences so we have this summation and we have to prove that for n being an integer which is a positive integer that one over the product so r plus one times r plus two times r plus three gives us this here where a b and c are integers to be found so it's five marks quite a decent question i think so let's have a go at tackling this method of differences question so first off uh, any question like this usually we're going to have to work out partial fractions so we need to get this into the correct form first before we can start working out the summation. Okay, so this is pretty basic. Um, I'm just going to put down the line of working and then I'm just going to put the answer. I'm not actually going to show how to work it out um, because this is just A level maths anyway. So we're going to have A over R plus 1, A over R plus 1, then I'll have plus B over R plus 2, B over R plus 2, plus C over R plus 3. Okay, now that normally you times it by through, so it'd be a lots of r plus 2 times r plus 3. So I'm going to write that line of work out, and then I'm just going to give the answer. So it's going to be a lots of r plus 2, r plus 3, plus b lots of r plus 1, and r plus 3. And then finally we've got the plus c here, so it's plus c lots of r plus 1 and r plus 2. r plus 2. And remember this is whatever, it, this is going to be identical to whatever your numerator is here, so this is just going to be identical to 1. Okay, so now you'd have to sub your values in. So what I'm going to obtain when I do this, um, so it's pretty trivial. Um, once you've actually done your A-level math. So this is going to be A equals um, a half. B would be minus 1. B would be minus 1. And then C will be a half also. Okay? So hopefully that's that's really nice and straightforward. It's just A-level math partial fractions, okay? So we're not tackling any further math just yet. Just the partial fraction decomposition here. So now I'm going to rewrite this uh, summation here using my partial fractions. So, this is from um, 0 to n, so r equals 0, up to n. So, where it was 1 over r plus 1 times r plus 3 times r plus 3. Now, we've just got to use the a, b, and c values that we've got. So, my summation now is going to be 1 over 2r plus 2. 2r plus 2. Minus 1 over m plus 2. Minus 1 over r plus 2. And then finally, plus 1 over 1 over 2r plus 6. 2r plus 6. Okay, so you're wondering where this 2r plus 2 and 2r plus 6 come from. It's because it's a over r plus 1. But we know a is a half. So 1 over 2 lots of r plus 1, give me 2 r plus 2. Same here with r plus 3 and a half. 1 over 2 lots of r plus 3 gives me 2 r plus 6, okay? So that's my new summation now. So for any method of differences exam question, the key is we've got to spot the pattern, right? So we start put plugging our values in. What we should find is that there's a couple of terms at the beginning that don't cancel, but then towards the end... Um, or in the middle, everything else will cancel and we'll get a few terms left at the end, right? So, let's have a look at doing this. So, if I say r is 0, because it begins with r is 0. So, if r is 0, what are my first three terms going to be? So, it's going to be 1 over 2 lots of nothing plus 2. So, I'm going to get half. So, it's going to be a half. Minus 1 over 0 plus 2, so minus a half plus 1 over 2 lots of nothing plus 6. I'm going to get a positive uh, 1 over 6 here, like so. So that's my first few terms. Let's put R is 1 in now. Now you can keep going here as many times as you want, but I do it a couple of times every time uh, you've got one of these questions, just so you can try and spot the pattern. Sometimes you might need to do a couple more. Um, this one is a bit of a trickier one to spot. It's not quite as straightforward um, as some of the others. So I'll put R is 1 in here. 1 over 2 lots of 1 plus 2. So that's going to be a denominator of 4. So 1 over 4. Um, 
minus, so this is a minus here, 1 over 1 plus 2, so it's going to be minus a third. And then finally, if, if I put 1 into here, that's going to be 1 over 2 lots of 1 plus 6, so that's my positive 1 over 8. Okay, let's keep going. I'm just going to do it a couple more times just so we can definitely work out the pattern here. So if r is 2, well, that's going to be 1 over 2 lots of 2, so 4 plus 2, so that's going to be 1 over 6. Keep going here, so I'm just going to plug 2 in again. Um, so it's going to be minus a quarter. Minus a quarter. And then plus 1 over 10. Now you can stop here if you can spot the pattern, but I'm just going to do it one more time just to make it very clear when I, when I show the cancellation. So r is equal to 3. And again, I'm going to get 1 over 8. Minus 1 over 5. Plus 1 over 12. Okay. So we've got the first few lots of terms here when r is 0, 1, up to 3. So now we've got to kind of look at this and see where the terms are cancelling. Now it's not sh straight away clear what's going to cancel here. So you've kind of got to spot the pattern, right? Well, you know, I've kind of got like... Um, I've got terms here, so a half minus a half. They will cancel, but I'm not going to bother with them just yet. I'm going to look for a different pattern because, for example, a quarter minus a third won't cancel. Can I cancel anything else? Well, what I'm going to look at is... Can I add any two terms and then subtract it from another, for example, right? Well, notice here we've got 1 over 6. I've got 1 over 6 here, and I've got a third here minus a third. Well, if you add this, so add this, add this, that'll give you 2 over 6, which is a third, minus the third here. And them three terms are going to cancel. Same again. 1 over 8, so 1 over 8, plus 1 over 8. That's going to give me 2 over 8, right, which is a quarter. We've got minus a quarter here. Perfect. They're going to cancel. And now this is the pattern that forms here. And it's because of how this this um, sequence is structured, right? It's 1 over 2, 1 over 4, 1 over 6, 1 over 8, and so on. Let's keep going 1 over 10, and so on. Here, this is minus a half, minus a third, minus a quarter, and so on. And same here, just like this one. And this is the pattern. So this will be 1 over 10. Underneath this 1 over 8, there'll be a 1 over 10. They'll add, and they'll cancel with this minus a fifth here. So that's how this pattern's going to work. So for now, I'm going to get left with a half minus a half. This quarter doesn't cancel with anything. So I'm going to get a half minus a half plus a quarter. Everything else will cancel. And what we also have to consider is the last few terms, right? What will I get if I put the last few terms in? Well, the very last term would be n. But what comes before n? Well, that's going to be n minus 1, right? So r equals n minus 1. So what do I get when I put n minus 1 in? So if you just sub n minus 1 into your summation here, so it's 1 over 2 lots of n minus 1, so that's 2n minus 2 plus 2. So I'm just going to get 1 over 2n. Oops, done that again. So 1 over 2n. Okay, so 1 over 2n. And now I'm just going to sub this in, um, hopefully nice and easy. So it's going to be minus 1 over n plus 1. Minus 1 over n plus 1, and plus 1 over 2n plus 4. 2n plus 4. And then, after this n minus 1, we're going to have r equals n. So r equals n. So r equals n. Again, just subbing n into this summation here, nice and straightforward. So I'm going to get 1 over 2n plus 2. 1 over 2n plus 2, minus 1 over n plus 2. And then finally, 1 over 2n plus 6. And again, just like we had with the first lot of terms here, some of these terms are going to cancel with the previous terms, right? I know we're not doing n minus 2, n minus 3, and so on, because we know the pattern. We know how this summation cancels, just like we demonstrated here. So... For example, now, if I had another three terms above it, so I'll just draw them a circle, so I've got my other three terms here, okay? We know the pattern. This one here, so this one, and this one will cancel with this one. So that cancels, that cancels, and that would cancel, right? Same again here, if you had another three, so 
what we're doing here. This is kind of becoming a little bit unclear. I should have done a bit more room. But this one, um, sorry, this one plus this one would cancel with this one here. So that would also cancel and, and that one and that one, for example. Now these three terms here, they can't cancel with anything else. I just get left with these three extra terms here. Okay, so I'm going to write what I get left with, and then I'm just going to clear everything, and then we'll finish the question to get this required form. So we get left over, left with, with, um, we get a half, minus a half, plus a quarter, plus, now I'm going to just factorise these, if possible, these um, terms that we've got. So it's going to be plus... 1 over 2 lots of n plus 2, 2 lots of n plus 2, plus 2 lots of n plus 3, n plus 3, and then finally minus 1 over n plus 2, minus 1 over n plus 2. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly clear everything. So I've cancelled the half terms because the half minus half is just clearly zero. So we've got a quarter plus one over two lots of n plus two plus one over two lots of n plus three minus one over n plus two. So now we just need to get this into a form that we can work with um, similar to the right hand side here of this equation. So notice I've got two lots of n plus two and I've got an n plus two here. So straight away what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this over a common denominator. So my quarter will still be there. Won't do anything with that. If I've got two lots of this here, and I've got minus one lot of it here, if I get it over common denominator, I'll have minus two lots here plus one lot here. So what that will give me is minus one lot, minus one lot of two times n plus two, like so. And then I'm going to have plus one, plus one over two lots of n plus three. And now finally, all I'm going to do is I'm going to get all of this over a common denominator and then simplify. And hopefully we should get something in this required form. So if we do that, what this will give me, and what I'm going to do first is just expand these um, before I then multiply them. So this will be 2n plus 4 and then 2n plus 6. Um, so if I do that, so this will be 2n plus 4. If I do it over here, actually, 2n plus 4 times 2n plus 6. Like so, minus four lots, so minus four lots. So again, I'm just getting it all over a common denominator, so hopefully, nice and easy, 2n plus 6. And then finally, um, plus four lots this time, of 2n plus 4. Okay, and my common denominator here will be four lots of 2n plus 4 times 2n plus 6. Okay, now, straight away, you might be thinking there's a problem here um, because I've gone from having this n plus 2 and this n plus 3 to a 2n plus 4 and 2n plus 6. But don't worry about that just yet. Keep some to find the numerator, and then we can sort out the denominator after. So if I expand everything and clean up the top, so I'm going to get 4n squared as my first term, plus 12n plus 8n, so that's going to give me positive 20n. So all I'm doing now is expand this double bracket here, and I'm going to get a positive 24. Positive 24. Minus a n minus 24. So minus a n. Minus a n minus 24. Like so. And I'm going to get a n plus 16. So it's going to be um, plus a n plus 16. Okay. So let's just double check there's no errors in this. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. And then I'm going to keep the denominator just as it is for now before we finally clean up the numerator. Two n plus six. Like so. So now I can start cleaning up this numerator. Okay. So this minus eight n will cancel with this a n. I've got a positive twenty four and a minus twenty four. So all I'm going to get left with on my numerator is 4n squared 
plus 20 in, plus 16. Okay, everything else just cancels out nicely. Plus 16. And then I've still got this four lots of 2n plus 4 and 2n plus 6. Okay, so now we, we're getting close to this required farm. We've got C lots here. This C is going to be my 4. But here I've got 2n plus 4, not n plus 2. So how do I get from 2n plus 4 to 2n plus, uh, sorry, n plus 2? Well, I'll just divide this by 2, right? Same here with my 2n plus 6 to n plus 3. So if I divide this bracket here by 2 and this bracket here by 2, well, that means I've, I've divided by 2 twice on the denominator. So I've got to divide... Well, instead of dividing by 2 twice, I'm going to divide just by 4 on the numerator. So, if we do that over here, dividing each term in the numerator by 4, that will be n squared plus 5n plus 4. Okay, so that's my numerator. And then my denominator, that will be 4 lots. And just be careful you don't rewrite this again, but instead we've got it in this required form. So it's going to be n plus 2 m plus 2, and then m plus 3. And now finally, we've just got to factorise this numerator. So n squared plus 5 n plus 4. So this is really easy. This is your GCSE math. So this will give me um, n plus 4. In fact, that looks like a h. I'm going to undo that. So n plus 4 times n plus 1. All over four lots of n plus two. Oops, that's an m. n plus two times n plus three. And there we have it, guys. We've got it in the required form um, given in the question. So that's five marks. Quite a, a long question for five marks, but a good question. So there we go.